So the next step is we're going to build out four separate devices which are going to be very useful when it comes to routing information around in the computer that we're uh, going to be building. First step is we want to be able to pick one of a bunch of possibilities. Maybe that's one of a bunch of registers, one of a bunch of memory locations, one of a bunch of processors, who knows. Maybe we've got four processors and we want to be able to pick one of those processors to do a thing. Well, we don't want to have to have four lines that will do that. We can actually do that with only two lines, right? Because two bits will give us four possible input combinations. And what do we call those input combinations? We call them min terms. So if we're going to build a device that can choose one of a set of possible options, um, we're basically building a device that will take an input combination and tell us what min term it corresponds to. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we want to have a two bit, we're going to call it an address. This is going to select one of a set of possible options. We're going to call this an address and it's going to be bit one and bit zero for that address. Don't worry too much about addresses and routing and stuff like that. As we build out the machine, you'll see how all this stuff works. But if we have two possibilities uh, for our input, that means that there are four possibilities for any device we can choose with those two bits of an address. We have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, as usual. Now, if there are four devices we can choose, uh, maybe there's four registers, four memory elements, right? Uh, we're going to name those. We're going to call these uh, with D. These are devices or data or whatever that we're going to choose. D3, D2, D1, and D0. Those are the four devices that are going to be active. And so this device that we're building, this decoder, is going to have actually four outputs, one for each possible device that we want to select. Now, D3 should be activated when min term 3 is active. That's here. So it should be 1, 0, 0, and 0. D2 should be active when min term 2 is selected, right? We say we want number 2, we, we give a 2 in the input, and we get 0, 1, 0, 0 on the output. I hope you can see where this is going. D1 should be 0, 0, 0, uh, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 0, and D0 should be 1, 0, 0, 0. These are, in fact, the output functions for each possible min term in the input combination. So input combination 3 means min term 3 is active, means output D3 is active, and the other three outputs are not active. So let's build this out. This actually is fairly straightforward to, to construct, right? D, we can even just read this off. D3 is true when A1, A0 is true and no other time. D2 is true when A1 is true and A0 is false. We're just writing out our, our min terms for this function. D1 is true when A1 is false and A0 is true, and D0 is true when A1 is false and A0 is false. Four functions, four min terms, and we're going to draw out this device. Okay, So this device looks like this. We're going to actually draw this with a slightly unusual shape. So it's not just a box. It's a box with a sort of a, a spreads out a little bit. And we're going to have our inputs. We're going to actually put them down here, which is, again, a little bit unusual, but you'll see how this is going to work and why. A1, A0, and then we're going to have those four outputs for D3, D2, D1, and D0. So this is actually our first of our combinational devices. It's a decoder, and it takes an encoded binary combination and presents what we call a one of n representation for that number. If we give it number three, bit three is on. If we give it number one, bit one is on. And we can build out devices like this of any shape and size. If we have two inputs, we have four outputs. So we call this a two, two, four decoder. If I were to say I wanted eight outputs instead, I would need three inputs. That would be a three to eight decoder. And we can have a one to two decoder as well. Now, it's worth noting that by itself, this is useful enough, but we also want to have the option with many of these combinational devices to turn them on or off as we go. And so we're going to actually add another input called an enable. And this is going to be when we don't want any of these on, right? Because with this setup, we can only ever have one of the inputs on at the same time. 
if we were to add another bit that was called an enable, when that enable is zero, everything's off. When an enable is one, then that bit is on, uh, whichever bit we activate. So now we're gonna build out this, and this is just a slightly different. Uh, and again, on your logic function um, software, you'll see these as options. They might look a little different, but the idea is the same. So we're gonna have an enable, we're gonna have an A1 uh, <laughs> and A0, those two uh, address lines, and then we're gonna have D3, D2, D1, and D0, like that. And this is gonna be called a two to four decoder, two to four decoder with enable. If the enable is zero, all four outputs are zero, if the enable is one, one of the outputs is zero, depending on the address. Now, what if I wanted to uh, build out a larger decoder, but I didn't want to go through the trouble of constructing all of these terms? What if I wanted to build out a larger decoder uh, using existing decoders? Maybe I could build a larger one with uh, like a, a, two, a three to eight decoder with two to four decoders. Or maybe I could actually build a two to four decoder with one to two decoders. What would a one to two decoder look like? Let's start another page. We're gonna build a one to two decoder. And we're going to build that out by saying if I have an address line, address zero, uh, then it's going to give us two output lines, D0 and D1, D1 and D0. And let's give it an enable as well, uh, because that way we can see how that works in our um, truth table. And we're gonna need the enable to use this to build larger ones. So when the enable is zero, the outputs are all zero. And when the enable is one, the output corresponds to the address. In this case, the address, if it's zero, D zero is active. If it's one, D one is active. So the output here, D one, is going to be enable, right? And it with, um, did I do that backwards? Nope, yeah, the address line zero, uh, enable with the address line. And D zero is gonna be the enable with the address line inverted, okay? So this looks like, and again, we'll build a little one, looks like this. Uh, it's going to have the enable bit here, and it's gonna have the address line here, and it's going to have D0 and D1. Uh, usually we put them in the other order. Usually go, we go from top to bottom just so it's easy to read. That's not easy to read. Let's look at what's inside it. It's gonna have uh, enable coming like this, and A coming like this. And then our input D1 is going to be just an AND gate with the enable and A. And the input D0 is just gonna be an AND gate with the enable and A prime. So we're gonna have an AND gate for every min term that we generate, uh, and that's gonna give us uh, each of our outputs. Now let's take this device and let's use it to construct this device. So this is what we want to have happen, okay? We want a device like this, but we all we maybe decided that we want to use these instead. And we can actually do that because if we look, the first two lines of this device are going to be when A1 is 1. The bottom two lines of this device are when A1 is 0. We can actually take A1 and we could use that as the enable for um, these two of these smaller devices. Here's what I mean. Watch this. So here's two of these smaller devices. We're going to say when A1 is 0, we're going to enable the top device. When A1 is 1, we're going to enable the bottom device. And this is A1. And then A0 is going to be the same. And this is D0, D1, D0, D1 for both of these smaller devices. But in the end, what you get, if you look at the result, is that this is gonna be uh, D0, D1, D2, and D3. I got those backwards, didn't I? Yeah, this actually has to be the inverted one. This one is done without being inverted because D3 
equals a1, a0. So this is a0 here and a1. d2 is a1, still has to be positive, and then a0 prime, because a0 prime is the d0 output of here. Then d1 is a1 prime, a0, and then a1 prime, a0 prime. So we could build a four output decoder two ways. We could build it with these gates like this, or we could build it with these like this. If we wanted to build this one out, uh, we could look at each of these terms. And again, it could use an enable. So let's build it with the enable. Uh, we're going to have four AND gates, one for each min term. And then we're going to have the address lines, A1 and A0, coming up. And we're going to have these four lines going out. And each of these is a min term. Now, the top one, D3, is when A1 and A0 are true. We'll have our enable here as well. So it's enable A1, A0. That's going to be D3. Then we have our enable, same thing. But in this case, D2 is A1, A0 prime. So A0 gets inverted. That's D2. D1, its A is on its uh, positive version. And A1 gets inverted. And again, the enable. And then D0, we have the enable one more time, A0 and A1. And so you can see we've got an AND gate for every min term. And the, uh, the term that it represents is entirely put together by which inputs are inverted on the AND gate. So this is a decoder. We're going to take from a encoded representation of binary, and we're going to make a decoded representation, a one of n representation, that's going to allow us to select one of a set of possible outputs.